Uh, in this video, I'm going to analyze the Sagnac experiment and show that it proves that the velocity of light C is relative to its source, which agrees with the Mitchelson-Morley experiment. The, the, the basic Sagnac ring experiment consists of a photo, a fiber optic cable in a circle, and at some point, a laser emitting correlated photons simultaneously in two directions around the ring. They travel around the ring, they come together again at the source where they're deflected and create an interference pattern. Now the object of the analysis is to find out what the difference in time is between the two circulating photons. Now it's assumed and it's a basic probably a, a basic physical assumption of the experiment that the instant the photons are emitted, they travel with constant speed in a straight line with respect to the inertial reference frame. Now, to see what happens, consider the, the, the following. We, we have the, the, the challenge is to track the path of the photo, photo uh, the track the path of the photon around the ring. Now, consider the following. Suppose I have a, a balloon, there's a balloon basket. Someone is up in a balloon, they're in a basket, and the balloon is rotating, and down on the ground there's a straight track and a train moving at a spe specific velocity. All right, now, from the ground, what you see is the train moving in a straight line along the track, and you see the balloon basket rotating. Now, on the other hand, if you're up in the balloon, what you see is, and this is the essential, the essence of, of, of the whole calculation, what you see, what that track looks like to you when you're up in the balloon looking down at it. And if you're up in the balloon, and let's say it's rotating with angular velocity omega, what you see is... You see the track at time at t0 in a straight line, there's the train. Then after time t, you see the track rotated about the center of the basket. And the train has moved up a certain distance. And again, after another time t, the track has rotated again, and the train has moved further on down the track. So what you see, if you're in the balloon, with respect to the, 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 the basket, is a rotating track along which a train is moving at a constant speed. So now, the analogous situation in the Sagnac experiment is that I start off, I have, and I'm, I, I have, here's the Sagnac ring, and I'm going to observe the experiment from within the ring. My reference frame is with respect to a fixed ring. So what, so what I see is Initially, a, pho a photon emitted with a speed that I'm going to assume C. That's my assumption that the, the speed with respect to the uh, point of, uh, with respect to its emit start emission point is C. And once it's emitted, it's going to continue at speed C along this line, which is a straight line with respect to the inertial frame and rotates with respect to the inertial frame. So I start off along the track, and now I, and then what I see is the track rotating and the photon moving along the track. Once that essential picture is clear of the rotating path with the photon moving along the path at constant speed c, everything else just falls into place. From, from, from the, that's it, that's the problem. And that, that, that clear picture reminds me of a professor I had who taught, uh, I don't know if, it, 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 he taught a class in civil engineering. I don't know if it was strength of materials or it was a specific class in, in, in just uh, civil engineer. I wasn't a civil engineer, but we took the course. And th 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 this guy was really, I mean, he, he was at the top of his profession. He was, he had just retired. And what he did was, he analyzed skyscrapers and designed the beams and the columns 
in skyscrapers in New York City. So, I mean, the architect may design, you know, the shape of the building and say, I want beams here and columns here. But, but the deadly serious part of that is the design of the columns and the beams that have to support this structure. That's, that's a life and death calculation. Just imagine a 60-story skyscraper where if a beam collapses at, at the foundation or columns collapse. Now, the, the thing that he emphasized throughout the entire course was one thing. And the way he emphasized it was that the first, in the first class he said, when you, ha when you have a, 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 a problem, what's the first thing you do? Nobody said anything. He says, you draw a clear picture. Then he said, all right, what's the second thing you do? I said, well, what's the second thing you do? Yeah, you draw a clear picture. And he said, what's the third thing you do? At this time, by this time, the class kind of suspected it was draw a clear picture. So for the rest of the semester, almost every day, he would start the class and say, what's the first thing you do? The class would all say, draw a clear picture. Second thing you do, draw. So that's why... The, the solution to the Sanyak calculation is a clear picture, and that's the clear picture. The track is rotating from, from the point of view, with, from the fixed, from the point of view of the ring with respect to the, the ring. The track is rotating, and the photon is proceeding along the track at a speed c. So it, it's emitted here at a speed c in that direction. And after a time t the track has rotated a distance omega t and the photon has moved along the track a distance s is equal to ct. And finally, the track, the, the, the photon or the train, this is like, arrives at the ring up here after which it has traveled a distance ab equal to this b. So this rotating section, the train, so the train, I don't know if I can demonstrate. So the, the train is rotating along this rotating section of track until it hits here. And that's the geometry. Now, all right, AB, this distance here, AB, is equal to CT, and that tells you the time of traverse. And the distance of traverse is the arc AF, and that is equal to this angle here at time T equal cap T plus this angle plus that angle times the radius. Arc distance is angle times radius. Now, R times the sine of alpha, here's alpha, is this AB over 2. The, 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 the calculation is trivial once the picture is clear. So from when alpha is small, so as, as the, the direction of emission approaches a, a tangent, alpha is approximately AB over 2R. Now with that, with this and this substituted into that, which is high school algebra, maybe grammar school algebra, you get that AF over T, AF divided by this, the, the circuit, the circumferential velocity is this distance divided by the time it takes to go that distance, so it's AF over cap T, so V circumferential, I, I probably should write that down here. Uh, v circumferential is equal to A F over cap T. So if you do that calculation, then you get the circumferential velocity is R omega plus C. And R omega, of course, is the, uh, the circumferential velocity V due to the, the, the rotation due to the rotation of this line about at angular velocity omega. So V circumferential is C plus V with omega in uh, this direction. And if you uh, if you do the same thing for, for projection in the uh, in the opposite direction, then you get the result which is exactly the same as letting omega be negative here, v circumferential in the opposite direction, c minus v, and that, that's, the, that's the solution. That's the, the relative, that, that's the circumferential velocity viewed from the ring. 
with, with that now, you can do the, the calculation that I've done over and over. Well, I've, I've just said starting here, imagine that I unwind the ring in two directions and uh, the velocity in the ring is C minus V in one direction, C plus V in the other direction, it travels a distance L. I, I've done this many times before and everybody has seen this calculation. And from that you get that uh, C plus V T is equal to L and C minus V T is equal to L. Or T1 is L over C plus V, T2 is equal to L over C minus V. And from that you get the, uh, the, the classic result that I forgot to write it in here. Uh, T1 minus T2 is equal to uh, 4 A omega over C squared. You, that, that's in any textbook. Yeah, that, that's the, 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 the time difference for the, the two photons in the Sanyak ring. Now, having found the relative circumferential velocity for uh, the, 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 the relative circumferen the, the circumferential velocity relative to the ring, you can then find what its uh, what the circumferential velocity is in the uh, in the in the uh, inertia frame, and uh, I, I haven't derived that here. But that is, if, if you know the velocity in a rotating ring, if you know the velocity of a particle in a rotating ring then its velocity with respect to a stationary axis is given by uh, the velocity in the circumferential velocity in the inertial frame is circumferential velocity in the rotating frame plus omega r, which is v, so that in the, with respect to the stationary frame, we have the velocity c in the inertial frame is, is just equal to c, and then if you do the same, calculation in, in, in the, the, the two arms of the in the two arms of the, the ring imagine flattened out where L is the circumference where L is the circumference then in this case here you have that CT2 is equal to L this is L plus VT2 and CT1 is equal to L minus V T1, and you get, so T1 minus T2 is exactly, so the calculation in the inertial frame gives you the uh, same result as the calculation in the rotating frame. Now, uh, th th this, this is a little bit disturbing because th th the question comes up, why isn't C in the inertial frame equal to V plus omega R, which, which would be the, the classic, uh, expression for uh, if, if I have a, a, a rotating ring and uh, I, I, uh, the, 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 I fire a bullet say in that direction then the, the velocity in the inertial frame will be uh, C plus uh, R times the angular velocity. But if you make that classic assumption the result is that there is no interference. It's wrong. So with the, the problem stems from the reflection from a... So, so what, what's wrong with CI equals C plus V? And it's that the problem is that the ref, is with the reflection from a moving mirror. That is not clear. I, I, I spent a lot of time googling reflection from a moving mirror and all I found was either... It was some very esoteric calculations which you know some publication which I didn't understand and it's it the, it's the same problem that you have that I came across when when looking at the Mitchelson Morley experiment uh, in the Mitchell basically in the Mitchell Morley experiment you have a situation where you have a velocity c a speed of light a speed of photon absolute c that's reflected from a moving mirror v and you really don't know. It's hard to say exactly what what the reflection is. If the move, if the if the mirror is stationary, absolutely no no uh, problem because the angle of incidence is the angle of reflection. But when the mirror is moving, 
you really don't know. So you have to accept this C for the, in the inertial frame as, as the velocity in the inertial frame with respect to the rotating ring, and that gives you this calculation down here. So uh, what, 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 I, I kind of a little bit, went through it kind of fast, and some things are a little short, but the, 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 the essence of the whole idea is that, the is that of the rotating path, which gives you the, the uh, circumferential velocity with respect to the stationary ring as C plus V. So thank you.